So welcome everybody on uh, second session in the open source education track. Uh, this session is called Tutor Stack, a student-centric learning experience. It is presented by Lee Griffin and Colm Dunphy. Uh, folks are from Ireland and I believe uh, they will say something about themselves uh, in a short while. So good luck. Perfect, Enjoy. thank you, Marek. Good morning, everybody. Um, great to be back at DevConf, um, hopefully next year in person, but the, the virtual experience will have to do today. Um, so I'd like to do just a quick introduction and a very broad overview of, of why we think this is an important topic before passing it over to Colm. Um, so my name is Lee Griffin. I'm a senior engineering manager in Red Hat based in Waterford. And this is Colm Dunphy, who's a lecturer based in Waterford Institute of Technology, which is our local college. And Red Hat and WIT, as the acronym goes for the college, have a very strong relationship. Um, we've hired a lot of graduates from it. We take a lot of interns in. Uh, and we try to give something back. Uh, as we all know, Red Hat is very community facing. So we try to give our expertise and our insight. And this is really the result of that expertise and insight. So what we're gonna talk about today is a very student-centric learning experience and almost to show how the college have flip the experience on the head to turn it into a, a paradigm of engagement and to mirror how students and graduates will interact in industry uh, when they exit the college system. So I'll pass it over to Colm and he's going to take us through the technical side of it and you'll hear from me later on. Over to you, Colm. Thanks, Lee. Um, so I'm a lecturer on the WIT, uh, HDIP in Computer Science. This is a program that's been running for 10 years. Uh, we've had uh, three cohorts at any given time. Uh, currently 155 students, and uh, they all have to be working, they're all mature students in order to take the course. Uh, and by doing that, they get 90% funding from the Irish government through a springboard program. Uh, this is the first fully online program at WIT, so we're very excited to uh, be able to do that. Uh, and we're on our fifth online cohort. Uh, in moving online, we needed a new approach to academic delivery. Uh, single user operated online, online course production and delivery system and a similar workflow for both synchronous delivery and asynchronous delivery. And on the right, you can see um, what a course actually looks like when, uh, when it's delivered. And uh, really the goal is to produce um, a full stack orientated developer within two years. Uh, motivations, we wanted to improve the student experience, but also the lecture experience in delivering online. Uh, we wanted MOOC quality. You would be familiar with um, programs like uh, Coursera, uh, but we didn't have the budget. So it had to be open. It had to be free or at least very low cost. Um, so our technological choices are based on that. So we had to build and come up with a framework for blended and online uh, and digital delivery. Um, and in doing that, this meant unbundling the learning management system. And the open um, management system that we use is Moodle. Um, but we, we had to uh, make it better. Um, so effectively what we came up with was a coherent tool set for teaching online, and that's called Tutor Stack. And um, this is all the technologies that we've glued together, if you like, uh, to come up with a solution. So as part of that uh, stack, um, we have tutors, and that's developed by uh, my colleague, Eamon de Lester, who is the lead developer. Uh, it's an open source platform uh, for enabling lecturers to structure and publish rich learning materials more easily. It can be done in other systems, but we wanted to make it more easy. Uh, basically, supplying to the lecturer um, templates that they could edit as text files and then produce nice looking courses like you see on the right. That has been extended to include Tutors Live and Tutors Time. Tutors Live simulates the live classroom lab experience where you can find out who's here, what are they doing, but in an online context. It's easy to do that in a classroom, but in an online uh, experience, that's, that's a bit harder. So we've come up with Tutors Live. And this really promotes being part of a community online. And of course, everybody at this conference will know about how important community is. Uh, tutor's time then is for student interaction and engagement patterns. We want to be able to see, you know, uh, what are the students doing? When are they doing it? How long are they doing it for? And if they're not doing it, then we can facilitate or use this to facilitate early interventions for student success. 
So let's look at the feature set. This is the tutor stack. These are the technologies we're using. Um, they're all based on being open, free, and low cost. Um, video is a big element in, in MOOC systems, and we're a Spock, if you like, a, a small uh, private online course. So video is extremely important. We chose the YouTube platform because it was free, and it gave us many, many additional features. Uh, in order to get our signal to YouTube, because we use YouTube Live, we're both live and, and on demand, uh, we use the Open Broadcast Studio uh, uh, software. And uh, that gives us many advantages. We can have different layouts. Um, we can switch between them. Um, and we can use green screening, as you can see I'm doing here at the moment. We're actually uh, delivering through OBS. Uh, for annotations, we use ScreenBrush or I, uh, IPvo Annotator. Um, Zoom is part of the solution as well and has become part of the solution and I'll talk about that a bit more in a second. Uh, layer 3 is about assessment and feedback. Uh, so traditionally people deliver their notes in Moodle and they add some uh, assessment uh, later. We've kind of removed all our notes from Moodle and we only use it for uh, students submitting formal summative assessments. We use Socrative to um, uh, do informal or, if you like, uh, formative assessment through quizzes. And it enables us to share on screen while we're recording live classes answers from uh, students because it's totally anonymous. Uh, and it also uh, enables us to look at many more wrong answers. It fosters that community and people getting uh, in the class, getting more involved in the live classes, uh, which, again, leads to a better experience. Um, Community is a massive part of the success of the platform. And uh, before we were online, we used Slack for about two years, um, and we had fantastic success with face-to-face -face classes. And uh, it was it was a first port of call um, for using it for community on this program. You need to have a back channel. It's no good having uh, messages coming from everywhere. And when we did our research, uh, students in, in who had taken other classes their biggest gripe was the amount of communication that happens from lots of different systems, particularly email and discussion forums. We put everything into Slack. We don't have our students using email at all. Um, and then we had the additional benefits that it gave us, which was um, that you could screen share, that you could um, uh, do a voice call, a video call. And you could do remote desktop. And this was essential in a, in a programming environment where you're trying to provide support online. Uh, and we're going back you know, five years uh, when we're talking about this. It's all doable in Zoom now, but um, back then it wasn't. As you know, Slack uh, removed some of those features and they advised uh, that you use Zoom. So that's what we've done. And finally, we then get to um, our own contribution, which is tutors, the tutors uh, system for delivering all our online materials. And as I mentioned, tutors live and time are part of that. Now, all these systems generate lots of data and analytics, but we couldn't get a clear picture of how our students were getting on and we couldn't do it quickly and immediately. So. Uh, the extension Tutors Live and Time are designed to do that, to give us insights into how our students are getting on. Um, it also helps with community behavior and presence and allows us to see those student interaction patterns and also student progress. Uh, the goal was that we could make early interventions for student success. Uh, we know that students in a semesterized system, if they miss three weeks in a, in a course, um, they are very unlikely to succeed in and pass that semester. So we wanted to get in early, and and uh, that three week is is a, is a magic number. So here's tutors live. Um, when you're online interacting with the course materials, um, you can go live, tutors live, and what that does is present a card uh, which shows your profile picture coming from GitHub, and it shows what you're working on, what the current time is. So it, it's very visual, you can see, um, and it encourages peer-to-peer -peer learnings and support because you can see all your classmates who might be online working as well. Now, they could be working on different things, and the cards enable you to see who's working on, on what you are interested in. Uh, and that then uh, kind of promotes uh, making connections and, and discussing, as you would in a, in a real classroom, but we're now in a remote environment. Effectively, it's giving you the ability to look over uh, your shoulder remotely. Now, you can switch it off if you don't want to be part of it, but uh, most students don't. Um, <clears throat> 
So what, what does that mean then for the student? Well, you, they never know really how much time they're spending on the course when we've surveyed them in the past. Uh, they're guesstimating. So what we try to do is to uh, put numbers on that and color code it. And you might be familiar with this type of look from GitHub. Uh, it's modeled on that. So the student can see um, which, uh, how much time they're spending per week, each week <clears throat> on the program. Now, the lecturer can also uh, get a view and he, the lecturer gets to see what all students are doing. So you can see their interaction or engagement patterns on the left uh, here with the calendar. Um, but then that is all summarized on the right with, with a summary of how each student is doing. Uh, that's a heat map. Uh, red means bad. And as you can see towards the bottom on the right hand side, we, we start to see the students are starting to fall behind. So this then enables us to make contact with them through Slack uh, and see that they, they need a leg up or a hand and, and prompt them to, to uh, re-engage. So let's talk about the underlying technology. Um, it's open source from day one. It embraces the Jamstack, initially authored in Python and migrated to JavaScript and then TypeScript. Um, node command line apps uh, generating single page applications and uh, currently it's um, a Svelte application um, with Tailwind <coughs> um, implemented with uh, TypeScript. When the user is using the system, uh, they were originally publishing to GitHub or Bitbucket and to do that they needed to know uh, Git and originally using the terminal then using applications like source tree and Git desktop. Uh, most recently uh, in the last six months uh, we've managed to uh, to open it up to a wider audience. Uh, lecturers who are not techies um, can now just drag and drop onto Netlify but that doesn't yeah. version it. So if you want to get involved with our uh, open source project, it's tutors.dev. And this is the team, uh, lead developer, Eamon DeLester, and myself. And we have three students who are involved and interning. Uh, two of them are interning at Red Hat. And, uh, uh, and I'll just go through them. Uh, ben Capper, who's involved in the engineering. Uh, Emma Kidney, who's uh, been doing the creative and UX side. And Jordan, who's actually doing both. And uh, Peter Windle as well. So you can see all the, uh, uh, this is a landing page if you like to get involved with, with, the, with the project. <clears throat> this is what our front end looks like. It's a hierarchical card based system. Uh, you start with a course, you drill into the weeks or the, the, the topics that are being covered. Um, and when you click on a card like forms, it shows you then the subtopics within that. And uh, that will then lead you to the materials, the slides, um, or indeed the labs. And labs are really important in the programming sense. And uh, we, we put a lot of effort into doing step-by-steps uh, to enable our students to, um, to, to do labs. It's, it's not about theory, it's about the hands-on. Okay, so how does that work? We've got a static site generator, which basically uses uh, local files um, and it generates JSON. Uh, we have a course reader to read that JSON uh, to produce the site. Uh, it also produces the time reader, so separate um, uh, reader to do that, or application. We have static site generators are reading these files uh, in a folder structure that's predetermined. Uh, basically, we're writing markdown, uh, supplying PDFs of notes, um, and these get uh, JSON encoded, uh, hosted on Netlify or Versal. Uh, the course reader picks that up and we have uh, a Svelte TypeScript application uh, for the front end then that we've seen. And also for the time reader, we need to also interface with GitHub because that's where our students log in um, and OAuth and then Firebase for storing time data. So all code and sample courses are on GitHub. Uh, I think we have 29 repos and these are just some of them, uh, how they're related to, to what I've just described. Uh, tutors-sdk on github if you'd like to um, clone those repos or get involved so uh, over to you lee thanks colin so we've seen the amazing custom um development work that the lecturer and staff have taken on to try and create and, and engage the students but that's only half of the story um what i want to chat about for a couple of minutes is the agile semester so Agile is, is really important in the industry. It's how we build and ship 
um, our products to customers and the community in a rapid cycle because the, the engagement paradigm has changed and people want faster iterations and they want to play with things. So if we move to the next slide, um, we'll see the originals, if you can hit that column. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So we can see the traditional academic experience and, and it is waterfall in nature. And this is what I would have experienced and probably what most students globally are experiencing where you have a typical 12 week semester and what you do as you go through the weeks, you layer the knowledge and typically around four to six weeks in, you'll get the first um, project specification, which is delivered around the halfway point. Normally that coincides with a little bit of time off for the students for a midterm. Um, and if you don't get that right and don't layer that knowledge, the second and the, really the latter half of the semester becomes a struggle because the capstone project is delivered typically at the end of the 12 weeks and how semesters are organized certainly in Ireland the end of the 12 week semester coincides with the likes of Christmas holidays or summer holidays which means the delivery point can be beyond the 12 week mark on it and um, that way you lose access to the lecturing staff and it's a big bang approach so if you haven't layered and gotten the the prerequisite knowledge as you go through and um, that becomes a huge problem and as we see on the next slide that's effectively an anti-pattern so from an agile perspective, that is a total anti-pattern um, and effectively here, based on the tooling developed, it, it's magnified. So we have this real snappy approach to content delivery for early interventions, but we're still working on a 12 week semester. And what this also is the impact, and I'm speaking as an employer here, uh, when we take students in, they realize we're shipping something every two to three weeks, depending on the sprint duration. And that movement, that agile movement, it's dominant for the last 20 years, but it hasn't been replicated at an academic level yet. And just as a quick uh, reminder of what the Agile Manifesto is, which is on the next slide here, the Agile Manifesto was published just over 20 years ago now, and it's effectively a set of principles to guide how we should be building software. And it doesn't say abandon documentation or abandon contract negotiations and having a plan it puts a little bit more emphasis on the items highlight, highlighted on the left. So we want to have individuals and interactions. We want to chat with developers. We want to bring people together. We don't want to focus exclusively on the tooling and an overarching process. But what I love about it is working software. We want to get something in the hands of a customer or a community member so they can test it and bring something back. And more importantly, we involve the customer, right? That there are an active element of it and not someone to forget about once you sign the contract. And taking this approach, um, we try to look at what the agile um, academic semester would look like. So on the next slide here, we have this reimagined specifically for a, a college environment. So a manifesto for agile education. And if you look at how any academic course is structured, you have things like a quality manual, an academic calendar, uh, and effectively deadlines that you have to hit. But we want to still have those because you're governed, of course, by, um, by regulations and so on. But we want to put students and their interactions first and foremost, because at the end of it all, college should be about a successful student experience. That's how you graduate people and not stick rigidly to the initial plan that you have. Because as we say at the, at the bottom, stuff happens every so often and we need to be able to respond to that. And that was really the value proposition that led us to, which is on the next slide, the Agile semester. Um, and just before we get there, the 12 Agile principles, uh, just as a, a reminder. So the Agile manifesto is complemented by these principles and we've highlighted the ones that we feel were most relevant to the student experience. Um, the two big ones for me, is motivated individuals and a measure of progress. Um, you want to have people engaged, you want to have people see that they're learning, that they're progressing, that they're moving towards a target, which in a, a student's case is graduation. And we want to be able to metricize that along the way and not figure that out at the end of 12 weeks. So what we came up with, and, and Eamon has um, helpfully pasted it into the chat, um, we published uh, an academic paper, it's actually gonna be a book chapter that's gonna be published shortly, um, about the Agile semester. And this is centered around uh, the three week courses column so elegantly put it earlier, where we want to have the ability to intervene in and around that time frame, 
to try and bring students along, to try and rescue them, so to speak. So we have the formative assessments, those um, small, lightweight kind of approaches to quizzes and knowledge checks, as well as more formal assessments as we go through it. And by breaking them down, we model the, the scrum approach to retrospectives by using that as a means to assess, to test, to measure, and figure out was the learning outcomes achieved. And by dividing it into these blocks, you're getting a very consistent experience that mirrors what happens in industry. So if we move on to the next slide, um, we'll talk briefly about the impact. So uh, from a student perspective, and we've gathered data since semester one, since we, we've rolled out the the latest edition of it for these insights. And 87% of students have completed all classes in semester one. And if we compare that from a retention point of view, 80% of those students have continued on into semester two, and the national average for computing courses in Ireland is 55%. So it's batting well above the average, which is fantastic. And hopefully we'll come back in a couple of years with more stats to really drill down on this, because it is, of course, only one full semester that we, we've gathered this for. And what's really, really welcoming here is the community peer learning um, opportunity because that's how it works in industry right we all learn we deal with community we deal with inner teams and this is leading to higher marks overall and this is giving a serious leg up for students who undertake this course because they effectively are in employment when they're starting the program and they have career progression to look at job changes completely new careers and new companies by taking on the course because it has a built-in internship aspect of it. So they can see the belief, they're getting input from industry like ourselves in Red Hat. And what I love about it when I'm interviewing students from this course is the skills are there, the remote working experience is there. And to be fair, this was even in place before the pandemic, but even more so over the last 22 months or so that we, we've been experiencing this. Um, and they have an experience of Agile, which is fantastic. So they don't have that disconnect when they land in on the students. So I'll pass it back to Colm to talk about the, the lecture experience of this. So I suppose one of the, the, the best successes is, is the uh, energy and excitement we get by working on, on a course and working with technologies and a team uh, like the one on the HDIP. Um, the big success was that this was our first fully online program. We were years uh, ready to to jump in, but uh, you know to finally get one launched fully online and then it's running every year it, it has been a real success for us. Um, and that has led to excellence awards both locally and nationally. Um, and then when the pandemic hit, the college was actually scrambling, as were many, uh, to know how they were going to deliver remotely. So our framework was used uh, with some of the uh, enterprise level uh, um, options that were already in place, including Teams and Zoom. And uh, a WIT tutor stack was applied. So swapping out some of the technologies, but, but using the layers uh, to inform what would be used. Um, in order to deliver online, we needed to create studios, and we call them pods. And again, no budget, so uh, they had to be done really cheaply, but give the same you know, professional look. And uh, even getting budget for, for one was, was a, quite a deal at the start, but we now actually have 10 of these in place, and they keep building them. Um, also, the flexibility that we get from being online, professional development, and the openness, um, and it's led to a lot of additional research funding and more opportunities with universities, both in Europe, uh, uh, the US and Canada uh, that we've been working with. And the open source success, we've had 160 courses now using tutors. Um, the pods uh, picture there on the top right um, and, and how, how they've been used, but not just in WIT, that spec has been used by other colleges, not just at third level, but also at second level uh, uh, education. Um, additional funding from the National Forum uh, for Teaching and Learning Enhancement. Um, and the team has grown finally. We now have six people involved, as we showed you, since uh, September 21. Uh, and they've been working on aspects that we really needed to get to, accessibility, um, user experience, media, uh, creating that felt application and documenting the whole thing. It's finally documented. Uh, and um, Git is no longer a prerequisite, which was being, uh, it was a turnoff and that's no longer a prerequisite for, for lecturers to use it because of um, our new Netlify drag and drop. Um, and we're planning to move this forward as a formal open source project with the help of our friends in Red Hat.
Uh, you can find us on GitHub, Tutors SDK. These are the links. Um, we built a tutorial site using the technology, uh, Tutors Docs, uh, Netlify.app. Uh, there's Tutor Stack Resources, where we've got links to all the uh, details for, for, for the different layers on the stack. Each of those, you know, have been 20 minute talks before, uh, and, and we've collected all of those links and you can see them there. And uh, we mentioned about the Agile semester, so there's a, a quick way of getting to that book chapter. And that brings us to the end of our talk. Uh, so thank you very much. There's uh, links in there if you need to uh, get in touch with us. Super, we have one question um, from Luigi in the chat here. Um, just a side question on the video part. Have you considered Twitch, which has strong interaction support and open for integrations and has been used for educational purposes too? Uh, yes, um, we in, in coming up with the stack, um, we looked to gamers, we looked to farm influencers and beauty influencers and the worship industry. Um, and we looked at all the technologies that we're using and we've tried out different flavors. You know, we've, we've looked at many alternatives to Slack. Um, but the we're not saying what we've got is, is what everybody has to use. We've come up with the framework and you can swap in and out those technologies. Um, but the one we've got, you know, is 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 working well. So we've we, we've we've um, originally started with Adobe Connect, actually, uh, which was supposed to be the one-stop shop for everything. And I, I remember presenting a, a conference where I put a headstone and put Adobe Connect on the headstone. Uh, <laughs> um, so we do swap in and out of technology. We've looked at Twitch, but um, we haven't switched to it. And just to add in there, any of those integrations, so be it with Twitch or the likes of Google Docs or other markdown kind of editors or even paste bins, like they're, they're perfect API integrations for open source contributions. Maybe you'd like to help us um, and, and try out uh, Twitch for us. Maybe get involved. <laughs> All right. So thank you. Uh, we are out of time, unfortunately. I would have some questions myself, but uh, uh, we will have to leave at that. Uh, thank you once again, Colm, Lee, uh, for joining and for your support crew on the chat. You know. Uh, thank you very much. Super. Great experience. Thanks for having us, folks. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>